The Ford F-150 Lightning pickup truck looks to be a pretty decent competitor in the EV pickup truck space, and it might kill Ford. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So first let's talk about the Osborne effect. The Osborne effect is named after the computer company, named after the man, Osborne, <laughs> who created a pretty decent computer in the early 1980s and then did a press release on the Osborne 2 that said, look how much better the Osborne 2 is than the Osborne 1. Everybody is gonna want one of these, right? And sure enough, everybody did. But the issue was that Osborne did not have these products readily available. They said six months to a year before they would be there. So everyone stopped ordering Osborne 1s and the company company effectively went out of business before the Osborne 2 could be released. So ever since then, people talk about the Osborne effect as the effect of saying, hey, look at our company's new product, which is way better than the current product, but we don't have it yet. Because what that can do, of course, is have a very chilling effect on the current sales of products. So companies have to be super, super careful when they say like, hey, we have a new product coming out, that they don't make it look too much better than their current product, or else people will stop buying the current product. Or of course, if they have the new product and they can release it all at once and say like, it's available in two weeks or something, like Apple is kind of a master of doing, then that works out fine, right? Because they can say like the new iPhone 12 will be available in two and a half weeks or something. So, you know, then it's such a short amount of time that people will just pre-order the new phone and that will be fine. But what you don't want to fall into is what Ford is going to fall into this evening when they reveal the Ford F-150 Lightning electric pickup truck. For those who don't know, by the way, the Ford F-150 is the bread and butter of Ford. I think it makes something like 60% of their profits or something. So just that one particular model. It's very popular. It's the most popular pickup truck in the United States. And the US, as opposed to most other countries in the world, has a very large pickup truck population, right? There's a lot of people who order pickup trucks and that's all they will drive. In my mind, it's kind of a macho thing. It's like, we don't really care about the price of gas. We don't care about our cars being inefficient. We just want a giant truck that we have to haul around that most of us aren't gonna use that much for the actual purpose of you know, being a pickup truck, like hauling things. So for many, many people, the pickup truck is a lifestyle choice rather than a necessity, right? There's obviously people who work and who need a pickup truck to put stuff in to go to work. But many, many people drive a pickup truck as a lifestyle choice and a way of saying, this is the kind of person I am rather than for any practical purpose purposes. So what's the problem with the F-150 Lightning's release this evening? Well, let's think a little bit about what is probably going to happen in this reveal. One thing we discovered from President Biden yesterday, oops, was that the F-150, at least some version of it, is going to do 0 to 60 in 4.4 seconds. But I think if we're going 0 to 60 in about 4.3, 4.4? Right. Four flat? Four. Well, we haven't released it presidential. Okay. Right. Which is a really respectable zero to 60 speed. Now, I'm assuming that they're going to have multiple tiers of the F-150 and that will be some, you know, high tier performance model or something. And that very well might not be taking account of the one foot rollout. And if you're interested in that, Jason over at Engineering Explained did a really good video on that. So you should watch that. And yes, some of Tesla's performance models are guilty of that too. They have a little asterisk by it. So for example, my Model Y long range range has a 0 to 60 of 4.8 seconds with no asterisk, but the performance model's acceleration is based on a one foot rollout, which actually makes a lot bigger difference than you'd think. So anyway, watch that video if you're interested. I'll put a link in the description. But regardless, even if you add a half second and it's actually more like 4.8 or 4.9 seconds, that's still a really respectable 0 to 60 speed for a pickup truck especially. So that's a really good thing. The car itself, you know, the Mach-E that Ford has built is a pretty decent electric car, so that's a good thing in its favor. And of course the F-150 is an extremely popular vehicle, so there's going to be a lot of demand for this truck. So what is the problem with it? Well, let's start with the battery packs. So a really big issue with the F-150, if you look at it, and the Lightning looks just like the other ones, is it has a huge square front end and a cutoff on the back of the cab to where the pickup truck bed is. So it's really, really bad. Uh, Ford doesn't really release their coefficient of drags or CDs, but the fluid dynamic simulations that I've seen online put it at somewhere around 0.56 for the CD. For comparison, the best estimation that people have of the CD or the coefficient of drag for the Cybertruck is around 0.35. So that's a really significant difference. And the Model 3 has something like 0.23 as its coefficient of drag. So obviously the lower the coefficient of drag, the better you're going to do at highway speeds like 60 miles an hour or 100 kilometers an hour. It makes a huge difference at that speed how the air flows over the truck or over the car. And by the way, in terms of the Cybertruck, Elon Musk has tweeted a couple 
couple of times that they might be able to get the CD down to 0.3, which would be pretty incredible for a pickup truck. One of the really big reasons they can do that, of course, is they have the very sharp nose wedge and they also have the cover over the back of the pickup truck. So obviously this would only work if the cover was down. If the cover's up, there's gonna be a giant vortex in the back and that's going to really reduce your range. But anyway, this gives us a hint as to the battery necessity that Ford is going to have to have. So the Cybertruck, you know, single motor version is estimated to have about 250 miles of range on what's thought to be a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack. So Ford, in order to get somewhere close to that, my guess is that they're going to say the lowest model has 120 kilowatt hour battery pack and it will have an EPA estimated range somewhere around 240 miles. It's probably going to be just a little lower than 250 if that's the battery pack size. But of course, think about that. 120 kilowatt hour battery pack is a really big battery pack. It takes a lot of material to build that and it's very expensive. So more than likely the F-150 Lightning will start somewhere around $50,000 at a guess and it will go up probably in the 80s, maybe $90,000 for the high performance models. So it's going to be an expensive truck. I'm also rather disappointed at the aesthetics of the F-150. It looks so much like the other ones. And yes, I know they haven't taken the wrappers off and everything yet, but it's got that flat front. The one thing it kind of has is like a bar across the top, which apparently after the Cybertruck, every electric pickup truck has to have a lighted bar. But aside from that, it's just a big kind of square looking, traditional looking truck. And obviously they're going for their market and the market is based on people who like the F-150 look and the way that it performs. So there's going to be a lot of people happy with it, but I wish that they'd done something at least a little more interesting like Rivian has. They don't have to get all nutty like the Cybertruck, but they could at least do something a little more fun with the truck. So back to the battery pack, if we have say 120 kilowatt hours for the low end truck, up to say maybe 180 kilowatt hours for the high end performance model, that's going to be a problem. That is a lot of batteries that Ford has to magically come up with. And that means that even if there's a massive demand for this truck, and I expect there is going to be, so there's probably going to be a huge demand for the truck. I think that they're saying that they're going to be able to start producing it by late 2021, which would be remarkable in its own right. But certainly volume production will not even come close to happening until 2022, probably the middle or to the end of 2022. So, you know, let's say it's like the Cybertruck and there's five or 600,000 or a million pre-orders for this truck, that's great, except that they can't manufacture this and it's going to take them years to get there. And as opposed to Tesla, which is not currently selling a pickup truck, so what do they care? People are either going to wait for the Tesla Cybertruck or they're gonna go buy something else from another manufacturer. But in terms of Ford, people could easily say like, wow, I really, really want the Ford F-150 Lightning, but I'm, you know, number 500,000 on the waiting list and it's gonna be 2023 before I can get one. So they have two choices. One is just hold on to their old truck for another couple of years. And another would be to just go to another manufacturer and purchase another manufacturer's electric truck or just potentially lease or something, a gas truck if they really, really need one right now. So as I'm sure you're thinking right now, you're like, ah, there's where the Osborne effect comes in, right? We have demand, we have, this is the much, much better version of the F-150 and here is what we currently have but here is a gap in time between what we have to offer and what we can offer and that's going to really really chill the market for F-150s in my opinion. I think it's going to be a really interesting dance tonight when they reveal this truck. The marketeers are going to have to come up with a way of saying like this is an awesome truck and everybody wants it but not yet. So don't forget about the regular F-150s and the thing is what they can do is they can make this much more expensive so maybe they would would start it at 60,000 or something, right? And I think at F-150, you can get around 35 to 40,000 at a base level. So by doing that, they can create such a price tiering that people will say like, well, geez, I don't have that money right now. So I'll just go ahead and buy a gas powered F-150 in the meantime, instead of waiting. But if they price the F-150 to be competitive with something like the Cybertruck, which remember starts at $40,000 still, so that's a huge gap, right? You can't have an F-150 priced $20,000 more than the base Cybertruck. In fact, you could at that point get a maxed out Cybertruck for around the same price. So that would obviously be problematic with future competition and people might just say, well, heck, I'm just gonna buy the Cybertruck or I'll get a Rivian or something which is going to be out sooner. And the other option, of course, is for them to price it super aggressively and make a very small profit or even a loss on it and sell it at competitive prices to the Cybertruck. But then people are gonna say like, well, I would rather spend eight or $10,000 more and get the electric F-150 rather than the gas powered one. A large population is going to do that, which means there's going to be a huge chill on the F-150 market in the meantime. So again, 
again, we're going to have to wait on the F-150 reveal to get all of the exact details, but my prediction is that they're going to have to do a very, very careful dance, and that if this truck is as good as it looks like it's going to be, it could actually kill Ford. Ford could actually lose so much money on their F-150 gas and diesel truck sales that they could end up so far in debt and so far in the hole before they can really start turning a profit on their electric F-150s that they could be in a position where they either have to declare bankruptcy or they simply get bought out by some other company in the meantime. Now, I personally don't care one way or the other about F-150s. I'm not a truck guy, although weirdly enough, I do have a Cybertruck pre-order because again, it's just such a good price for such a beastly truck that I was like, well, sure, of course, I'm going to put down $100 for that. But I'm not a person who would be ever in the market for an F-150, but I do know a lot of people who are living in the southeast of the U.S. And this is going to create a really interesting tension. And of course, I do hope the best for Ford and their products, but I really worry that the better they make their electric vehicles, the worse off their fortunes are going to be in the near term. And given the fact that they're already in a lot of debt, if they don't work out some production or financial magic in the near term, they're going to have some serious financial problems due to the quality of their new electric products. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it fun and informative. If you did, definitely like it so other people can find it and subscribe for more of this. And of course, I'm really interested in revisiting this topic after the official reveal with all the official specs. I have a feeling I'm going to be reasonably close to the specs of this truck, but it'll be interesting to see how the marketing dance happens and how they say this is the future, but you need to buy an F-150 in the meantime. That's going to be an interesting dance tonight. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. You all are wonderful. Thank you all so much for your support. I truly appreciate it. And don't forget about Webull, which is a stock and crypto trading platform. If you look in the description, you click on the link and open an account, you get one stock valued at up to $250. And if you fund the account with $100 or more, you get a second free stock valued at up to $1,600. So that is a fantastic deal. Check it out in the description. And of course, don't forget about our merch store, which has don't mess with Tesla t-shirts, many other t-shirts, tumblers, mugs, etc. Check it out in the description. And finally, don't forget we are both Amazon and Tesla affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how clicking a link and going shopping helps out the channel. Thank you. In the meantime, feel free to ask me questions in the comments or leave your thoughts about the F-150 in the comments. Or you can always ask me questions at my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Till next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>